going into Dylan, pulling out. Gotta look at his legs. Hey there. <laughs> You're watching Nerd Talk. I'm your host. The R18 show is later. You have to follow the special Twitter and pay for the premium Snapchat. I was actually some fanfare, like, you know, you pull a string, confetti comes It actually out. looked like That's a milk. bad uh, dating site video, like, from the Hi. 80s. <laughs> this is Heidekins. <laughs> I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> like, who does it? <laughs> like, like, really? That was have, you seen my, have you seen my have legs? You, seen I have, you need a have long you seen walk his on the beach? I hate his Tinder the page. beach. I'll be completely honest. Yeah, you he likes long segues down the beach. <laughs> Completely covered from head to toe, no showing my skin at all. Wear oh, hijab the man. entire time. Unbelievable. Stay nice and out of the sun. Yeah, it's okay. It's all Listen, right. dude, you don't get this beautiful, beautiful complexion. Oh, you got that too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By going I, outside. I lift my leg and I overexpose the camera. Like you just kind of like. <laughs> this is before E3, after E3. Oh yeah. You see the edge of my knee here. I, I yeah. I can't tell what's the couch and what's your leg. <laughs> Look at Hold that. Hold on, I got lost this. Lost in the mix, right? I'm just gonna. Oh, you couldn't like, tell the difference. Hey, crack kills. You can white bounce off your legs. I you know. Well, we, We've I, done. We've done, <laughs> done that. We've tried. We, 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 we forget our uh, cards. Oh, my. It's, it's, it's a default. Hi, Dina. It's, a, it's an easy way in. Hi, Dina. How are you? watching us right now. That's neat. Yeah. Former President Obama. Oh, th thank you for watching, sir. Chris Hardwick, you can't say that name anymore. You know what? All right, hey, so okay, there's okay, some controversy so, oh. there, isn't there? All right, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. If we're going to talk about this, we are. <laughs> I, I like he released text messages that weeks after he dumped her saying that she was trying to get back with him for cheating on him. And he laid the rules out ahead of time. But she he still abused her ahead of time, right? I no. Mean, already... Yeah, but 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 we're gonna on Twisted Views this week. We're gonna talk about that because I think the hashtag Me Too is over, and I'm gonna hammer it away. I mean, it's been over. It's been turned into a joke, kind of anyway. It's been a meme. Just, it's yeah, been a meme. If you, yeah, if you, if you follow everything into. he released and followed everything that it she becomes released, a meme. Look, it's dead. Our Leave photo someone, hashtag Me Too. The, the bottom line was when someone puts you down uh, a, a set of rules. <laughs> You had a choice to walk away at that point in time, and you did not. Yeah, you can't go four years later and go, oh, by the way, he was really mean to me. That doesn't work that way. Makes sense? Yeah. When did this become Twisted Views? But tune in, what, Tuesday, Tuesday for Twisted so, hey, Views? Hey, look, you know, we got, we got, we got a special guest We tonight. started off, we were going to start off with con stuff. Uh-huh, what happened? Uh, another oh, yeah, con yeah, yeah. So, very cool. So, let's, so, let's, let's talk about... I'll force that transition by kicking it violently in the rear. <laughs> hey, you stop. <laughs> get, so, it, get it so, going. So, here, here's an interview that we did with... Uh, Who are we going with first? We're going to go with 13X. Well... What did 13X do? 13X. Rick. Let me pull this out. Yeah. Who's on right now, by the way? No, he's not. He's on my right now. Is he? Yes. Well, Connor, you all right there, buddy? Don't mind me. 13X totally Studios is in the house. Studios. Lights are too bright for you. <laughs> Had a bit of a mine, out That there. is really <laughs> cool. Oh. He does all the different Jason masks, and he also does pop culture. He had a Kevin Smith mask. And he he's actually got a, got a contract one too. with Kevin Smith. He sends these up to New Jersey to yep. the shop. Kevin Smith signs them and sells them at the shop. Nice. But he does Spawn, Venom, and a yeah. bunch of others. Yeah, they're really cool looking. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let, let's watch this video, and uh, this is a good interview, even though Michael did it, because, you know, not yeah. everybody follows the guy. Hey there, Nerdites. It's Michael from Nerd Talk, and we're here at MegaCon Orlando. I'm with Rick with 13X Studios. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. So tell me about what you do here, because I see a lot of killer no pun intended, Jason Mask here. Yeah. I, I'd first like to state that I'm very hungover from partying last night, so <laughs> if I say anything weird, I'm sorry. I'm still, like, hungover, I think, or in my mind, I'm still drunk from last <laughs> night. So anyway, um, yeah, I started um, 16 months ago, and um, I basically uh, cosplay Jason here and there, and I, did, I don't know, I just saw the Jason costume. I said, I love, you know, I love Halloween, so I kind of wanted to do something with it, so I... Uh, just I looked at the hockey mask and I said I can do something. So I started making Friday 13th style masks, 
And then I just started leading in doing a lot of pop culture masks. Yeah, I'm uh, seeing Kevin Smith mask. Yeah, I, I did a, I did a, um, a mask of, of Silent Bob. Someone took a picture of it and sent it over to Kevin, and they gave me an exclusive deal at Secret Stash. And they sell um, signed, Kevin signs every mask. Oh, that's and we've awesome. sold out five times already in the stash. So Wow. Yeah, that's, it's pretty that's cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. So how many cons have you done so far since you um, started? I, I started 16 months ago, and I'm going to say I probably did about 15 and I have another maybe 10 plans. So I'm trying to do like one a month at least. So yeah. do all um, the bigger ones. Out of all the ones you've done, because I see Chucky and <laughs> Hello Kitty, yeah. what's your favorite one you've done so far? Um, my favorite mask to date is the, um, the Friday 13th remake mask. I just, I, I love it. It just came out really good and I just, I, I get really excited to make them. I have no idea why. It's like probably one of my least favorite Friday 13th yeah. too, but I just love the mask. And um, all the pop culture stuff, I mean, pretty much like, uh, I like this Captain Swalding Devil Rejects. That's yeah, a fun one. Awesome. I get, ex I, my, my, like when I come up with a new idea, like for instance, I have uh, Cobra Kai, Karate Kids over there, and I, I love the show. And right away I said, I need to make them. So I get really excited for my first time making a new mask. So it's pretty cool. So how so, long? Tell, give me the run through. How you make it and do the whole process of uh, everything? Pretty much, um, you know, uh, sand them, um, prime them, and then start painting. The Jason stuff's a lot easier because there's not a lot of action. But you know, I hand paint everything with my pop culture stuff, and um, it just you know some take hours. Um, usually the process is like pretty much a day. I could turn around a couple in a day. Yeah. But the Jason stuff, I could pump out a little bit more. So. So coming to a convention, how many do you bring? Up usually, down? right now I'm bringing about 250. Wow. So That's yeah. Extra scattered mix of scattered all mix. Ones. About a half Friday 13th, half. Um, I do horror and pop culture in my other two that Which I do. Which one's been the biggest seller of everybody? The original. Original? Part three, Jason, and um, like Deadpool has. I sell a yeah, lot Deadpool's of Deadpool. Deadpool's huge right now, so yeah, it's hot. And um, I just did Venom for this for this weekend, and um, I, I see with I Venom coming out in October, that should be a nice one. Yeah, yeah. That. It's tough to make though. That one takes a lot of time. So uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, that's when I when I say I'm going to make five Venoms for MegaCon. Like I was like, oh man, it took like a couple days. It was just a lot of work. So so where can everybody find your work at? Um, 13xstudios.com, and then also um, like my Instagram, Facebook. Um, Twitter, it's all 13X Studios. All right, awesome. Yeah. That'll be it with MegCon. We're back to the studio. Thank you, guys. What you want, but the thing is, is like, 22 Jumpy made a great joke where he's like, he's like, oh look, he's like, he's in, a, look, he's in his off, uh, his, uh, you know, his, uh, his office. Looks like a giant cube made of ice, and everybody in the room turns around, and looks at Jonah Hill, and just stares at him for a second. And he goes back to the work, and I'm just like, yeah, it was all right. I love how you also give no context for the people. Like, what? Because they don't one, need context. One thing. They, they don't need context. They don't need context? It made sense for them. Okay. Isn't the giant block of ice at a Legion? Season one? It also had it, but it was well, funny because... The giant block of ice is from Futurama. That's how they stopped global warming. Well, they just drop a, a block of ice. There was, <laughs> there was supposed to be a giant block of ice in the middle of the desert in Avatar The Last Airbender, but there wasn't. It was a little bitty one that dogs were licking. Yeah. There's no resort. Then they went and tried to find a library. Toph wasn't happy about the library. No. Blind people don't like libraries. Turns out, yeah. <laughs> Who does it? Black people? Is that what you said? Blind <laughs> people? Whoa! <laughs> That's a little racist there, dude. I said oh. blind people don't like libraries. The <laughs> views expressed on Nerd Talk are not, not necessarily those <laughs> of everyone on Nerd Talk. I can't wait to quote that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoo! Put You're that right. in a meme. I twist can, some more of that, that Metrocom. Not yeah, no more. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I can see it tomorrow on Facebook. Um, oh! oh dollar. I'm not even back there. I get a dollar. Hey, Easy. I can see it tomorrow. Host on Facebook says that black people don't like libraries. Right? <laughs> you wanted to get Wait more views. Side, oh, <laughs> and this <laughs> is how we have to do it. When you brought over CNN. <laughs> We're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Get run the ringer on CNN, great. Local local uh, video cast, nerd talk. Local Roshi. Yeah. <laughs> local oh, Roshi. I just want, I, I'm going on the. Uh, uh, this is for the. This is for the. Uh, yeah. Black people love libraries. Everybody loves a book. I, I'm. Yeah. Let's look at DMX. All right, let, now go, let's just move off of that. Video. <laughs> segue to something How else. did we get here? It, anyway. it doesn't matter. We need to move <laughs> off <laughs> of it and just move along. There we go. So anyway, Fair so enough. you know, this next one we have here is um, uh, I'm, I'm going to save I'm going to save the clothing guy for last because this stuff is awesome, freaking cool. Um, this is uh, one of Michael's favorite guys, and Michael, tell us a little bit about this guy. Sal's and Tabitha. 
Tell him about your Spider-Man boyfriend. Oh my God! <laughs> come on, Mike. Which, no, I which, know nobody follows this guy, but come on. Oh, Luca Clothing. No, Luca Pirate Duck. You're, oh, we're oh, doing Pirate, Pirate Duck. Okay, I thought that's who we were doing last. Uh, so organized. Pirate Duck. Um, company. I met them ten years ago at Metrocon. It's been about that long. Yes, that's where these old semi-little ducks come from. Um, he makes yeah, geeky shirt. duck shirts. Their I shirts are really cool. Yeah, we showed them the other. We week. had them yeah. on the show, I think, two weeks ago. Right? Yeah. yeah, but he makes. Awesome duck pirate sh geeky shirts. <laughs> duck okay, which are not with so ducks, by the way. That, we're duck show the video pirate it's geeky. geeky. Yes, shirts. that's exactly right. what it is. We're going to go to video. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Hey there, Nerdites. It's Michael again. We're at MegaCon. We're here with Tim with Pirate Duck. How are you doing today? Not, not too bad. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. So... About 10 years or so ago, I met you in Tampa, yes. and you had a lot smaller stock back then. Oh, I yes. remember I got like a <laughs> Daffy Duck shirt, steampunk and everything, and since then I got hooked buying all your shirts. Thanks. So how long have you been doing this? We've actually been doing this for about 10 years. So uh, that was like one of your first cons then. Actually it was. Actually it was my second one, wow. believe it or not. Um, originally the company started out of one shirt out of the back of my car with 50 shirts. Wow. 10 years later we've grown to about 25, 30 shirts. And we do, you know, shows all over the place, mostly steampunk shows. So we're actually kind yeah, of doing steampunk's that awesome. Can't yes. go wrong with them. Yep. So what made you want to start doing this? Originally, it was a freelance company. That's what Pirate Duck was supposed to be. And then I made that one shirt, wore it around. People wanted to buy it, so I started selling it. And I just started from there. I started coming up with crazy ideas, um, just really weird things that I just want to put on a shirt. Mostly is because no one was making them. I wanted to wear them. Yeah. So I made the shirts for myself, actually. <laughs> it's funny because I forgot I was going to interview you today, and I grabbed a shirt. Yeah. And this is actually one of his shirts, and I got this, I think, Megacon like five years ago yep. or so. I picked this one up, and it's one of my favorite ones I wear. Thanks. I know there's, you have Bat Duck and uh -huh. a bunch of other. And a lot of shirts get retired, too, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah, that way we keep the, the inventory fresh, new, and exciting. Uh, because it's kind of hard to lug them all around as yeah. well. Plus, they become collector's items. I have some people like yourself who have that shirt, which is retired. Uh, we're not no longer going to make it, but again, we may have another shirt that'll be similar with a really weird sense of humor as well. Yeah. So, what's your favorite shirt you have that you like the most? If I would have to say the absolute favorite is probably the one that started it all, and it was just the logo with yo yo squeak squeak across the bottom. But then again, the. Uh, Haunted Mansion one, which we just yeah, released. That's nice. I like it's that one. It's absolutely my favorite. All the colors turned out beautifully. Um, and even the Rocketeer I've been playing with. I love the Rocketeer movie. So it's our newest one this year. Finally did a pinup of her. Out of so. all the ones you've done, what has been the biggest seller? And which one would you not want to retire? Um, probably the Steampunk Tinker, because she was my first Steampunk fairy. Uh, I actually designed her for another contest, and I didn't win. So I decided to produce the shirt myself. And she is so popular, even today, she still sells probably eight years later. Wow. Yeah. Now, if someone wanted to do custom stuff, do you do that too? Yes, I can do custom stuff. Um, I have worked for theme parks area here in Orlando for probably 15 years. So I have designed shirts for Wonder other people. Wonder what theme park that yeah. might have been. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and I do design shirts for other people as well. I've done some magic shirts, like, you know, uh, card games, you know, for yeah. particular uh, groups around. So pretty much sky's the limit for me. Where can everybody find your work at if they um, want to pick up one of these two or three or four shirts? Uh, it's really easy to find. It's actually pirate-duck.com. That's our website. We're also on Facebook. So just Google Facebook. Um, Pirate Duck Tees, we're on there. We're going to be on Instagram soon. I'm soon to be starting a website, uh, nice. YouTube channel. So we're actually you can show me actually drawing the, the characters oh, and things really like cool. that. So I'll show you all the process. Yeah. One thing I also want to point out, let me grab this. Every time you buy a duck, you get a pirate shirt, you get a rubber ducky. Yep. I have a ton of these, and I keep bringing them in the studio and just placing them around. It's going to drive John crazy yeah. sooner or later because he's going to have a whole army of ducks. Well, see, so, you now what's different from when you order something online versus you get in the, here at a con, we give, you, we give you a special at the con. So we have the two for 35, three for 50. These prices have never changed in 10 years. Yeah, if the cost sad. of the shirt goes up, I keep it always the same. But when you order something online, you may get something random inside the box. Oh, I may throw an extra shirt in. You never know. You may get a whole bunch of buttons. You may get a whole bunch of ducks. Have you thought about doing like a loot crate type thing, a monthly little package? I have thought about that. Uh, we're kind of toying with some new things. Um, I 
We'll probably be getting a 3D printer soon. And I may be coming up with 3D some 3D custom- printed ducks. 3D printed ducks. That would be really cool. Yeah, so. I would definitely start spending more money Yeah, exactly. There. That's what I was doing with the theme parks <laughs> when I was there, was doing some of the 3D printing before I left. All so. right. Thank you so much, Tim, oh, for your time. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Back to the studio. Thank you. That handshake was the most confident thing I'll interview. It was. <laughs> what the heck? Oh. There we are. Now there we we're are. back. There we are. We were, we're back. We are flying ducks. <laughs> he can't even. That was an impressive handshake, I have to say. It looked very businesslike. Dill was. So, 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 better than my duck say, throwing what, what, you, what, what you missed was I had started off by saying, that, was the, the, that handshake was the most confident thing of all interview. And then you chose a, a flying duck and, duck miss and he misses completely. <laughs> like, I can throw a duck. <laughs> buy, a, buy a duck, get a duck. It's never ending duck. Buy a duck, get That's a duck. That's what Dina said. Who let the child out of the kitchen? I almost ending. said something else, not duck. Well, <laughs> oh my. That's oh. illegal in some states. Some. Uh, not Florida. Most states. <laughs> You're talking about bucks, like money, man. Not Reno. You buy money, you get money. That's not a very efficient system. <laughs> yeah. You know, two dollars one dollar. It needs to be easy. Yeah. Buy you know, then you just buy one, get one free every now and then. Of course. We're hoping to hear from Tim, find out what convention he's going to be doing in Tampa this year. So is he? Cool. I hope so. We hope. I'm waiting to hear from Thanks him. Across. Tim, if you're there, Metro. Tim, anything. Metro, please. See if you're or Tampa in Bay MegaCon. MegaCon in Atlanta. Yeah. So if you're in the chat, you can tell us. But you know, yeah. You have to uh, get your writing. Type. So we want to do, let's let's jump to the last one. So this last one is kind of cool. This guy is uh, Luca. From Luca Designs. Is he on the second floor? I, uh, We're anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. So, I did not, so I wasn't here jacket. for this interview, so I actually don't know anything about this one. This is, he makes killer video game jackets. Really? Ooh. And movie like, jackets. Like jacket jackets? Yeah, your dad I bought, bought a, the Guardians of the Galaxy I bought one. a nice uh, Trunks jacket, like Capsule Corp. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. really cool. And I bought a Batman legit. jacket. Like, like, like the, like, well, he the, he fitted so it's like a normal. Jacket. I know. I was saying like, I was saying like you know the the cross no, style. It, no, it, it goes. It, it fits like, the entire way. Ugliest purple possible because they grab like we're like what's the what's a what's a version of purple? It's more of a blue vomit. actually. In the, well, well, in, in in the show it's definitely like a, it's like a gross purple. Right, I'm saying what he time. made is more like, of a blue. Oh, that's good. It's so, a really cool jacket. So it's a little bit stylish. Not a crop top jacket. No. Pointless. My abs right, like a freeze. Go to, let's look at the, this is actually another Michael one, so you know, no one knows no one's gonna go to the bathroom. And no one knows this guy and you know, I don't know anybody buys you know. your stuff. Is there a fade out of a jacket in this one? Like there was a mask and a duck yes, in the last there one? There is because I shot it. Here we go. Nerdites, this is Michael with Nerd Talk, and here we are at MegaCon. We're with Luca from Luca Designs. How are you doing today? What's up, buddy? Thanks for having me. So, these jackets are, like, wonderful. This is a vegan leather jacket? This is a vegan leather. We also do real leather for those people who want something a little more breathable. Awesome. Tell me about your jackets. What made you decide you want to make these? I wanted to do something that was authentic. That's the key word. So, I would go out and buy a jacket or a sweater, and it would never have the quality that I would expect or the character detail while being socially acceptable and wearable really anywhere. So that was the goal, to really achieve that. Yeah. How long have you been doing this now? Actually, just since this past August, September, I was testing things out, and everyone loves what we do, so we're just growing and growing and growing. Wow. That's it, man. So far, out of all the jackets, which one's your favorite that you've done, and which one's probably the most popular that sells? The favorite one I've done is the one that helped launch the company, Soldier 76. And I originally did it in a black because I thought blue would have been too crazy, but of course the fans are like, no, we want blue. They so then the blue, blue became my it. favorite eventually. And uh, eventually I wore it so much that I kind of went, let's make some new ones, almost like I have OCD. So I went <laughs> boom, 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 Vegeta, Trunks, Guardians, Stormtrooper, whatever I can think of that would be cool. So what ones do you have that you want to work on next coming out? I know earlier Ooh. you mentioned you want to do a Green Lantern, which makes me happy because that's the one I would do. The Green Lantern was actually commissioned by a female in Calgary, and I thought, you know, there's a lot of guys that would appreciate it, so I'm going to do both. But the ones that I'm really excited about is Boba Fett and a Millennium Falcon with texture, like the Ooh. jacket I'm wearing now. I'm going to try and print the whole thing and have a piece of leather kind of rocking the, the texture of the ship. So we're trying to figure that out right now. Yeah. That's Can you tell me... What other ones do you have right now? I know I got the Batman one on, and this is awesome. I saw X-Men over there, and what other ones do you have? I'll show you something cool that's really a big hit for this show right over here. You can that hold it. Nice. Check that out. That's the Vegeta. Oh, wow. In weathered version. We do a clean version as well. 
and we got fully functional pockets on the inside, and it's all hand stitched, handmade. Well, that's really nice work. I like that. That's awesome. So, how many cons do you travel to yearly so far doing this? Yearly, I try to hit one a month right now because there's a demand in, in every place that I've been to, and even England. I even went to Birmingham for a show, and they loved it. So we're trying to get back up there soon as well. All right. Where can everybody find your work at? LukaJackets.com, baby. <laughs> Facebook, website, Face Facebook Instagram, and Instagram everything. as well. Yeah, we got at Luca Jackets. We kept it really simple. So LukaJackets.com or at Luca Jackets on any social media. And you said earlier you also do custom sizing and custom made them for. We someone? do. I have a lot of customers that come in, and it's standard. People work out, or they got longer arms, or females that have trouble finding the right fit. We do custom measurements for only thirty guys US. that are a little bigger in That's the belly. That's right. <laughs> we do up to a four XL, but because we fit small, so some guys that are that are really really big will say no problem. We'll make you a custom. Thirty bucks on top of the price will help you out. All right. That's Thank it. you for the time. Thank I you hope for you having me, man. It was great. Megacon. Thank you so Thank much, you. man. Back to the studio. <laughs> you gotta roll Where you get the coffee at? Because you were supposed to bring me one earlier. It was hand delivered. Like, I'm gonna go take a show and I'll bring you a coffee right back since you want one. That's I what I heard. did, and then I found out Lupe lives much further away than I thought he did. It took a lot longer to Thanks get to his Lupe. place. Yeah, so you can blame uh, Lupe. Sorry, buddy. It's your fault, that's so. all. It's fine. But no, those are nice jackets. I'm so happy. That one is. I, should, those I, are, I really. Those are cool jackets. I missed the interview. I'm like, I really wish I would have. Uh, you probably would have bought a jacket. No, I don't have the money. I have $180. I didn't have the money for one, and then they bought one, and I was like, well, I don't want to be left out. <laughs> I would have been left out. It was oh, peer pressure. We made it by well, one. Here's the, here's the other thing is I would have been wearing gear, so I would have been like, oh, well, I'm not going to carry it. I'll just wear it out. And then it's Florida. <laughs> we all wore our jackets all day. No, we didn't. No, well, we didn't. <laughs> no, when we picked them up, got sold out. when we picked them up, we wore them for the rest of we the day. We wore them around the convention, but as soon as we got outside, it was yeah, like, they nah. came off. It's, it was ninety something up. Mm, I'm not wearing a leather nice out there. Have heavy leather, real leather. Yeah. Are they? They're, so they're, are they leather? He has real yeah. leather, and then he had the, the, the vegan leather. The vegan leather, yeah. <laughs> the vegan, vegan leather. <laughs> I dig it. I, di I dig it. That instead of fake Toast leather, the, we call it vegan leather. leather. Yes, leather. Mark, that is one of Rick's masks on the table. Hey, it's Mark. Mark hey, hard to watch. So, speaking yeah. of Mark. Speaking of Mark. So, hey, Mark. So, over? We, buddy, buddy. Ready? Ready? We got, we got to start that scary show. Yes. Because we want to make no. sure Dylan's running with the big Hell no. camera. Hell no. Yep. I explained how that works last week. Are we going to put the camera in front of him? Get his point of view? Oh, you know the scared? back Yeah, back that would cameras? be cool. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Leo? Uh, I'm confused. He has no idea. Uh, no idea. He's so completely in the dark right now. I'll say, I'll fill you a little bit. lost as you. You have to explain who Mark is, I'll say, uh, Mark Bunty handles um, Spooky Florida. He handles a lot of the... Uh, Eerie Florida. Eerie Florida. Yeah. One of the books seems to spooky something. I don't know. Okay. No, it's that's the con I'm thinking of. That's Spooky Con. Spooky Empire. Spooky, spooky Empire. Empire. That's what I was thinking yeah. of. My bad. I mixed those two up. Um, he handles Erie, Florida, which is a book. Is we have to say it's the second one coming out, correct? I believe it's the second one. Yeah, it's yeah. another one coming out. Yep. When is it coming uh, out, Mark? I don't know. Hey, Mark, when's it coming out? Yeah, I was saying, I can ask the man here. Um, <laughs> but it goes through a lot of the, the creepy stuff of Florida, haunted areas in Florida, and it's really, really cool. That jackass, that jackass, and the bigger jackass in the back all... And Brie. And Brie all want to go, Dina. let's just go to... September, no, Dina's with me on this one. Oh, yeah, she said no. no yeah, go. Yeah. You guys can stay they're here. Like, they're like, let's go to a haunted place and just stay there all night and stream. Yeah. I'm like... Yeah, it sounds like fun. Let's I see. I can't even, get, you know, I can't even get her to chuck hot sauce. I mean, you know. Let's go to the haunted um, lighthouse in Saint, see, Saint here's Augustine. The, here's the problem. I told you. Even That's a little like, far. You guys, you guys uh, are like Saint Augustine's not that bad. You guys yeah. are like, oh, just stay. You know, you can just stay back in the studio, and you'll be our aunt. And I'm like, no. Here's here's the problem. You guys all die. I come back. Some but pentagrams all over the place. I watched Paranormal Activity. I know how that ended. The first okay. person to check the footage went, oh no, and then it killed them too. Mark, where's Doesn't the closest haunted house to where we are right now? Die. We gotta make a trip. Freaky Florida, by the way, in September, Mark says. Yeah. Which is his new book. That's gonna be good. That'll be good, yeah. I think the closest haunted house would be Bush Gardens in October. No, actually Newport Ritchie has the uh one Hacienda. Down there, Hacienda. Mm. So they the Hacienda, which is... Um, and then uh, I think Mark said that over in Tampa, the one of the most haunted buildings in Tampa is the Columbian. Yeah. Yep. I bet John's house is haunted. You hear moaning at 3 a.m. It's just him on the toilet. On the toilet. 
<laughs> no, no that's him at 3 a.m. It's the meth that lab down below. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. 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 Um, that was cr- the was worst cr- thing, actually, 7 in the morning, waking up and seeing John running through the house with just a towel on. I'm just trying to get some coffee, and that, here he goes that's running right by up. me with a towel. You're like, that raisin has a <laughs> coffee cup. <laughs> that's your wake-up call. <laughs> Apparently it was. Ooh. <laughs> what? Did you hear that, John? <laughs> he just, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> he just, he just that raised raisin you has a coffee cup. <laughs> you, know, you, know, it, you know, he has a joystick. I have a fucking hoe. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh wow. my word! Okay. <laughs> Mark says the Cuban Club is one of the top ten haunted houses in America. And All I right. Bet, and I bet I can bet with Mark being volume? as popular as he is, Mark <laughs> Maybe the go- Hey, by the way, y'all spirits, can you make me a Cuban <laughs> while you're at it? <laughs> or as you call it, a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> can Mark get us in there? Can we all do a show out there? Yeah, what was Cuban Club? Good. Actually, you know what? I Cuban Club. That's an Ebor, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. What's the, the What's the uh, hotel that they were saying the, with the room? John Vincente? <sighs> no, they. There's one in St. Pete. Mark, you yes. mentioned one last week Hotel where you said there was a room that was uh, room 203 or a 303. Yeah, I'm not going any of your. What was that from? Either. I'll send flowers. I'll it's send about, flowers. It's about as far as it'll go. We could also uh, go to Casadega, the little spiritualist town. <clears throat> that place is creepy. The bodies could not be recovered because. Hey, uh, Eddie boys uh, on. In, in the, in Eddie. The pro- in the process of preparing the bodies, they went missing. It's like, mm, I'm not going. The hey, Vinoy. That's, last it. Night, Eddie. that's it. The, the Vinoy. The Vinoy. That. Yeah. Vinoy. 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 Not the park. Not scared no ghost. I ain't scared of no ghosts. They're just class five vapors. Uh, that's my cousin Danny back there because Jeff is trying to subtly poke me in the arm and find out who it is. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> I, he's like, he's like, he's like, tell me, tell me. I'm just like, I don't yeah, care. But so what's the show? They're fine. They're good. They're sitting there. He's just like. We oh, have a live Jesus. crowd out there now. Got an audience of one. Can we get some Woo! cheering? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yay. Yay. So maybe Mark. Yay. So Go maybe team. Mark can. Woo! Maybe Mark can get us into the Vinoy or the Cuban Club. Hello, Miss Patare. And we could uh, Marriott or yeah, Embassy. I, mean, I, I don't think need. We, I think we could set it up. You know, but we got to make sure our cameras have that what night about vision the clown, mode. Clown ghost. Yeah. You know. Yeah, what about clown ghosts? Today? No. Pops? Okay, now, no, no, ah, no, no. Now, so, do we have now I, will be, I will be out. <laughs> no. But the door's locked. Can we get late. someone dressed as a clown and just come scare you? You do, and there will be a brand new door to the... Uh, the I, I will make clown a door. Clown ghosts at Ringling. Oh, no. yeah. Oh. There's an episode. No, of the part. no, sorry. Mark, I am out. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm out. We have to do a ghost show. No, nope. do ghost show. Guys. I don't do clown nah, pictures, no. ghosts, none of them. I just, no. For some reason, no I clown. Just, I imagine they're like you know, they're 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 night vision cameras are on. They're walking through and all of a sudden here. Yeah, no. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Jeff. <laughs> okay, let me tell you. I work. to be on a unicycle. Okay, listen. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work in the emergency room at a hospital back in New York, and when well, we would go. We had well. We, one of the things that they had clown at the hospital unit. was they had they had a, a department that would do clowns. They would go to the children's area, you know, and so notify them before I, they died. Right. So I went to the cafeteria one day, got on the elevator, and when the doors opened, instead of me getting off. Four clowns come walking into the elevator. Now you ain't going nowhere. Patty, I we literally have, can we get that clown outfit. I literally almost <laughs> fell to the floor in fetal position and rocking back and forth. I was scared to death. I literally had to like. I told him, "Go. You cannot come on here and shut the door." It was bad. Poor guys I, just I do not a lift. Like, no, I don't care. Catch the next one. A lift. <laughs> or I lift. do not That's do. Funny. I do not do clowns. So you had video game. We did. We're jumping you topics. Video game. Yes. Yes. Let's get off these clowns. <laughs> you had I'm done with clowns. Video game. That sounds like a bad <laughs> joke. <Japanese laughs> That's not a bad you idea. United States of Smash. <laughs> that was such a well done scene. United. Shush. Okay, so so we here's here's Dylan, and he's got some footage for us to watch from. I do. Death Garden. Oh, from what? So Patty said. Hey guys, Sid here, and I'm here to talk to you about the new game, Death Guard, which is a game by the company Behavior, which are the same people who brought us Dead by Daylight. Now, just like Dead by Daylight, this is an asymmetrical 
hunter versus survivor style game right now what you're seeing on screen right now is the survivor footage or the runners as they call them their job is to run around collect parts collect upgrades and upgrade this fancy little crossbow on their wrist the survivors are designed to run fast be agile they have basic parkour they can run up walls they have pretty high jumps uh, and their job is primarily to just evade the killer for as long as possible while collecting points around the map. You can see there's capture A, B, and C objective listed. Now, those are on the map somewhere, and an ally can mark them, just like I marked that there. Upon marking, you get something called NPI. The NPI bonuses are for the fancy upgrades. Now, what you saw me there click there was the upgrade component. Now, if I go back to that blue tower that I had just marked, I can upgrade one of my three abilities. This is incredibly important. Your abilities are what keep you not only your teammates alive, but yourself alive. So you can see me, I'm just kind of evading the hunter for the time being, trying to stay as quiet and close to the ground as I can because I don't need to fight any, uh, start any fights early on. So I make my rush. Grab here, I grab stun. Because well, I'm playing the control class. There are three classes, as you point out. It is Torment, Healer, and Control. Control can little stuns, blinds, CC, Coward Control to uh, manipulate the killer and stop him. Torment slows him down, kind of aggravates him, makes it harder for him to do actions and whatnot. Uh, and then Healer does exactly what it sounds like. They fire healing bolts and can really help out in a pinch. So you hear me collecting, you see me collecting another upgrade part, and I quickly just move right back on. I find the objective, so I have C over there, which means I have A over there, and then I have C, uh, B to the far right, excuse me. Um, my character is going to take a slightly defensive stance, I'm going to stand behind it towards the shadow. Mainly the fact that there are multiple things to watch out for in this specific game. One of which is terrifying, is the sniper rifle. Yes, the killer has guns in this game, which make it mildly bonkers at the moment, but I'll get to that in a bit when I talk more about the killer. So, once you're standing on those pedestals, you are marked. You can be found by anybody. So, I hit him with my stun dart, I tried to make it away, but the killer is fast. And as I showed, those guns do a lot of damage. Now, my team is trying to stun him and trying to bother him as much as possible, trying to give me as much time to run away as I can. Luckily, one of my beautiful teammates pulls him off of me here, I'm pretty sure, and I managed to uh, get back up. Now, this is later on in the game, because obviously I'm not going to make you sit here and watch the entire match, because this match goes on for, goodness, 12, 15 minutes. That's about the average time. Is anywhere You can have anywhere from a 5 to a 7 minute game, all the way to a 10 to 15. I, this game varies depending on how well your teammates coordinate and play together. Now, obviously this game is the closed beta. This is um, not live yet. You, you have to have had an access code to this. So a lot of the people are still getting used to the game. A lot of the Dead by Daylight pros and veterans are already used to this style of gameplay. There are, But they're not so much the parkour aspect and the, and the multi-level, but they're there for the teamwork. They know how to solo off and defend themselves pretty well because they're used to those kind of mechanics with things such as decisive strike. So, in order to win the game, for the Hunters to win the game, you'll do exactly what he just did there. Once uh, two of the A, B, and C points are captured, the doors open, and these doors can be accessed like that. All you have to do is walk into it, and you're immediately out. All you need is three of the runners to make it to that gate, and then they win. Whereas the killer has to kill three of you. So, now what you're seeing is killer gameplay. Now, the thing is, I'll be completely honest, I'm biased towards killer. In Dead by Daylight, I mained killer. That's just what I did, because I loved Michael Myers growing up, and I think Jason's freaking awesome. So, needless to say, you know, they put me, in Dead by Daylight, they put me into those shoes, and they put me into the killer, which was fun. So, in Death Garden, they put me into a more Predator-esque role, which was... A blast of its own. So, the runners get a head start. Of course, they're runners. That's what they do. So, he get they get their head start. It doesn't matter. I'm coming for blood. I'm just waiting out my timer here. And the thing is, is I'm, j I'm, j I'm trying to accentuate the fact that there's a timer. So, in this setup, I'm running the shotgun, auto turret, and then the sniper as my secondary. The sniper, you don't use too often. I think I get a few picks with it. Uh, it is two rounds, uh, two rounds per kill, it seems, unless they have a shield, which in that case, they'll survive for an extra shot, which is nice. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's, it's not very nice for me, obviously, but, 
So I'm running around. Uh, now the killer has a cool interaction with his upgrade parts. It'll upgrade the current gun in his hand. So because I have the shotgun out, which is by far my favorite weapon in the game, uh, I continue to upgrade the shotgun. So I can also deny the health packs from them. Uh, and I can kind of watch out for these upgrade posts. See, there's no interaction between the killers with it because the killers can't use it. We upgrade as soon as we pick up the parts. So I can see the, that part was taken there. So that means the hunter or the runners are around here somewhere. Excuse me. So there's a limited finite jump. I'm showing them off a little bit and trying to show the wide variety of movement abilities. Now he stepped on a point, and that's that little red blur you saw there. That was someone off in the distance. So now it's hunting time. Now it comes down to the old Debadela idea of hunt them down and find them. At first, I thought I lost him. Then I caught a glimpse. And that glimpse was what I thought was all I needed until I lost him again. Yeah, uh, it, you know, to be fair, this is like my second game as killer in this game specifically, and those bushes are uh, a pain, but it's fine. Someone reveals himself right away. I see a stun bolt over my shoulder, but, oh goodness, this game is brutal. I just run him down. I tried aiming there for some reason, when reality just, just hip fires the way to go. You see me chasing down, chasing down, and boom, down he goes. Now, to explain the blood well mechanic, I didn't explain this when I was playing um, Survivor. Uh, the blood well mechanic is a sacrificial altar style deal. I have to have knocked down three of the runners. So you'll see me, I believe I knocked down this one shortly. Yep, you'll see they went red. I knocked them down. Due to that, you can see the uh, odd little symbol there. How it now has two ticks on it rather than all three. When I'm at all three, the altar will raise up and I can send one of the runners to the execution post. Once I execute them, that is one of the runner's lives gone. Now, while they're on the ground, they're slowly bleeding out. Now that was me slapping down auto turret, by the way, in case you're wondering. This is me violently outplaying my opponent and knowing exactly where he's going to run. So I was able to close the gap, put a few more shells into it, and down he goes. Because he was the one causing me a little bit more trouble than, I, than he was worth, I threw him into the post first, which we will see that coming up very shortly. There's a timer. As you can see there. But I have time. So I'm going to activate my boost. Which uh, consumes my stamina. Which is how I use most of my abilities. And I'm going to speed up the process. So now I can chase them off a point. And because I'm nice and quick here. And manage to get back very not, uh, very quickly. I can go and upgrade. Or I'm sorry. Not upgrade. But execute the uh, runner that I have caught. So as you can see here. I'm running over. ba ba da ba 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 He's trying to save his ally, but he didn't do it quick enough. I came in, stopped it. They tried to stun, but it was it was too late. So I have him here. I figure, okay, well, I don't want to go too far. And sure enough, I get a runner. They're running away, running away, running away. They're desperately trying. Now, what I didn't realize is someone bled out. As I mentioned, there's a bleed out timer on the other ground. Someone bled out because I didn't kill all three earlier. And I've only gotten one execution, so someone had to bled out. So... My my thoughts on that is the bleed out timer should be a little long. That's the blind effect, by the way. As you can see, it's incredibly potent. And then this. This is an arena event. The arena event allows uh, this gives you unlimited ammunition and unlimited boosters for a few uh, for a few seconds. I think you have 30 seconds left on it. So I'm able to just run around with my thrusters on at the speed of sound. And at this point, they have to play a very, very dangerous game. If I catch them, not only am I enhanced in every way, but... If they die, it's over. So for some reason, he reveals himself. I don't understand why he did this. I ended up clearing right over, not just completely overestimating the jump. Gives me a good run for money. I'll give him this. This kid was better. That was the stun you witnessed there. Boom. Down. Now, I, all I have to do is send him to the blood post, and I win. That's all I got to do. It was so simple. So, I believe... Uh, oh, actually, no, that's right. This one I've, uh, I lost. Ended up getting him instead. He... He just got eradicated by the auto turret, and that was unfortunate for him. So his buddy actually hid from me quick enough. That was the, that's the idea, is while I'm while I'm stunned and dealing with other people, you have to save them. So, of course, they died. I didn't get to execute him. There's no way to save him because the last person was downed. He went to the blood post, and that finished the game. Um, kind of just a few fa final thoughts on the game is I think it's a little unbalanced at the moment. There's a few bugs here and there, but honestly, the game is pretty fun. It enters early access in August. I highly suggest you guys give it a try if you like this sort of game. Uh, if you want to see more, this weekend I'll be streaming it at twitch.tv forward slash Cytokins. I'll put that up on screen now. 
and if you want to head over to the YouTube channel, I'll try and release some stuff on Death Garden shortly, probably end of this weekend slash early next week. So that'll also be right there on the screen. But being click that, yeah. All right, guys, that's it for me. Time to get back to the studio. Thinking about clowns. <laughs> look at that look. <laughs> look at that look. Wow. <laughs> look off. I will end you. Get your clown cake for your birthday. Oh my. <laughs> the hunter in that game should look like a clown. That would be awesome. It would be. Yeah. But <clears throat> that's right. I, I, I look. I agree with Jeff. No clowns, man. Clowns aren't that bad. Get oh, yeah, your clown T-shirt. We're gonna have clown episodes. Also, love how we just showed like a ten-minute gaming video. We're still on clowns. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> because we never because left. Clowns. We did it. Dual munch over here started it. <laughs> Dual munch. Um, oh yeah, payback from to, last week. To, to everyone. Really? Yeah. I'm the least that said anything about. Oh, next time, I'll really roast this <laughs> crap out of you. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so so it's very similar to the Assassin's Creed ideal. Any sick I mom loves it. matters. <laughs> I saw it and I purposely skipped over it because I'm like, well, just leave clowns behind us. And then Eddie comes. But in, yeah, that game looks great. Um, that was the closed beta, as I explained in the video, but you guys didn't get to hear that. Uh, it's a closed beta, and the sign up for it just ended. So as of, of is the, there a release date yet for it? August. Is when the uh, August is when I believe they're gonna do an open, but I think the preacher sure they want to release in August as well. First on Steam. Yeah, first on Steam. It'll be just like Dead by Daylight, where it's first on Steam, uh, then later on it'll be released on consoles once they get some of the balancing. Because right now, because when Dead by Daylight first came out, playing that on console was such a pain because controllers were god awful with it. Yeah. It didn't work because you have to be able to hold the direction at the same time while using the other one for a camera. And people weren't comfortable with the idea of looking around while moving in a different direction because, like, you can't see what pallets and whatnot, which are hey, very Jeff. important. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jack, ready? And go. <laughs> read it. Read it. Dylan reads so it. So that's how you use a joystick. Oh. Oh, God. There's your clown. That, <laughs> yeah. Hunters, Please notice. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> one of us was just sitting there minding our own business. Yeah, but the other one looked the like they one really enjoyed was it. feeling frisky and was like... Well, you both had smiles as big as... Uh, and he came over and he was like, $20 is $20. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think Hunter... I don't think you can consider that <laughs> a smile on Hunter's face. It's a, Why do you think no, no, Hunter no, no, wouldn't no, no, stay the in the same smiling. room this exactly. night? He's smiling. Hunter's got <laughs> a half a smile. Like, ooh, hey. <laughs> I have a... That doesn't go there. A little more to the left. <laughs> that doesn't go there. Just like, mm. oh, so <laughs> you want to read long. what Mark just said? Yeah. Uh, uh, one, one year at uh, Hellview Cemetery, we got a. Uh, ooh. <laughs> protested, protested by real, real clowns. clowns. What? Uh, see, for making no. clowns scary. You know what? <laughs> I am. I back out. I back out. I'm not. I'm no longer doing so this. Next week is the no. clown theme, right? Yeah. I will not be here. So. <laughs> Have a nice week, and I'll see you in two. <laughs> so let's no. ask, let's ask let's ask our guest there what uh, what you know. So we went we just got we saw that one. So what do you play most of, Leo? <laughs> I'm mostly on the PlayStation. I can't get into the computer gaming because um, I spend so much time on a computer at work. I like to leave the computer to play my video games. Yeah, I'm that way. You see, you say that until you go and edit, or, you know, when you're you know, say from, from coming from someone who's editing and you know switching shows. But then I go home and I'm like, no, my computer is completely different. My computer has nothing to do with work on it. It's all fun. And I have a blast. See, I do and editing games, and Leo? gaming on the same machine. That's what games do. I right? do my editing, but, I, but my editing's fun. I do, I do. I do, I do like editing. Yeah. Don't just, let hey, look. Just get, cut no, in. No, no, so you cut gotta in. learn something here. You just gotta talk. So you you just start talking, man. I'll stop oh, talking. Well, eventually. I play the, uh, the Assassin's Creed. I really liked their multiplayer back in the day. They did away with it. But uh, I think like 75% of my world history came from Assassin's Creed, my knowledge in it. So what do you think about <laughs> that? That's true. What do you think about the new, was it, uh, the new Assassin's Creed that's in Greece? Odyssey. It looks like a reskin of the Egypt one. And I wasn't a huge fan of the, the, the I like the combat engine, but the whole difficulty, like having the enemies leveled, if they were like more than two levels above you, you couldn't beat them. Yeah. It was like really was, limiting where you can go. I would say that was, that was introduced in what? That was, that was introduced in the, in the Egypt one, right? Yeah. Yeah. One. I, yeah, I wasn't a fan of that style, but I mean, I like... I liked the game. It was a lot of fun. The combat, they finally ramped it up, and I wasn't randomly jumping off buildings. The combat Isn't was that the using best this part is to jump off buildings. 
the, randomly. The, it's, it's yeah. when you don't want it, you're running it's, away and all of a sudden you decide, oh, I like this tree. It's to be the parkour artist that you can't be in real life. Hardcore parkour? Yeah. <laughs> Hardcore, 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 hardcore. The, the funny part about that game is my wife actually wouldn't watch me play it because I was killing animals. Like, ooh, I got to kill five lions and three hippopotamuses and two crocodiles. To Yay! Make a <laughs> to make a, a wallet. To make a wallet. He knows Peter's outside his window. <laughs> yeah, in, in, the, in the best one, sir. the lions were easiest to kill if you found the ones that were already in cages. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, just <laughs> poke through the cage. <laughs> this is so wrong. I'm like, and it doesn't. You walk, you walk into the cage, and all the guards are like, "Hey, you can't be here." It's just like, it's easier to kill ten guys and then one line in the cage than one line in the wild. Come here, you pull your sword out real quick. All right, let's make quick work of this. So Eddie, Eddie online wants to know, hey Lee, are you afraid of uh, you like you like Oxy? Do you like uh, clowns? I'm, Back to clowns. I'm indifferent. Never end. I mean, they float too. So yeah. Clowns. They float too. That's they float too. Clowns, we yeah. need a clown I'm video getting, game. I'm, I'm getting itches. <laughs> maybe don't maybe like, they'll do come not, out with a. a, 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 a I don't get. Uh, what about mimes? Can you deal with mimes? Uh, no. Are you actually chlorophobic? Am I what? Chlorophobic. I it, think so. It, the irrational fear of clowns. You're afraid of chlorophobic. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I, like a, I think oh. everyone's afraid of chlorophobic. <laughs> no, no, no. I, not a lot of people are into that. So there, if there is a word more than. Terrified, I am it. Yeah, it's an irrational fear. Yeah, I, 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 I it's, it's a I am. It's if he's chlorophobia. scared of mimes, we gotta get him to play We Happy Few. Yeah, it's not, not mimes. So that's not even mimes, mimes are just that one's, that, one's, that one's take your drugs. You're like, I don't want to take the drugs. It's just like, no, just creepy as hell looking. That game has plot now, and I'm so happy. See, I don't, I don't, what? Plot. I guess I, I don't know mine Kinda. because we don't see too many of them around. It's I mean, open, you to figure the plot on your own. That's if your playthrough, you know, they're just clowns in training. Well, no, it's no longer like Yeah. It's not. It's they're actually they're like, making it like a campaign. Well, like there was one on America's Got Talent that I just couldn't watch. He played music, and it's just puddles. Scared. Puddles of yeah, party scared the crap puddles out of me. The pity Little party. Party. Have you seen it yet? I have. Yeah, awesome. no, I, I can't. Prefer, I prefer Puff the Magic. What about Dragon like what was the guy? Like the it was old great. Guy, tape face was that his name? Tape face. Yeah, he was alright. He didn't bug you? No, because okay. he's not a clown. He acted like a clown. Nah, he was, he was alright. What about the Rob Zombie tape, movie? The who? The Rob Wait, Zombie said, movie with the, uh, no the their take on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Man, I wish oh, Slink was in the chat. Um, Midnight House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah. yeah. There's, oh, Spalding? Yeah. Yeah, he was Spalding. yeah, that doesn't bother me. I mean, oh, he didn't bother me. Oh, the clown that killed people doesn't bother you, but no, the four in the elevator do? <laughs> no, because... Well, <laughs> first, first of all, <laughs> first of all <laughs> he was in a movie. These were two feet in front of me. Big difference. I was like, but one's killing people. One's just like... One's trying to help children. But he wasn't But he wasn't. A clown the whole they time. Were just trying he to was get just to the first floor. I, you know. I, no, made, like, I made sick go. kids laugh all day. What'd you do, Jeff? And just like I pissed I my cried pants. in the corner. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was yeah. So Jeff, I yeah. have a question for: Are you going to go to Universal Studios for Halloween? Ah, uh, <laughs> man, I wanted to meet Jeff. I really, clowns. you know what? I I want I to. Went the year freaking Jack was back. Jack was hilarious. That was such a fun. Day I would like day. to do it just to say that I've done it. I don't know if I would ever go into any of the houses. Why? I, that's kind of the point. Then, of going then, the then you're not going. Yeah, I know. I like to go and watch others be scared. You can't but see you that. But you gotta person. go in. You, you gotta, gotta go, go in the house. Yeah, I. See, I, I want to go in the house with him and just strap a GoPro. Right I here probably and watch him would. Scream. As long as long as there were no so clowns, <laughs> I could do it. A strap a GoPro. It's a strap up. <laughs> strap what? on GoPro. Bro? No, that's that's you two. You guys. No, if do you're scared of clowns. No, no yeah, no, no, no. When it comes to these two, it's the camcorder in the corner of the room with the dresser. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want to know. That's amateur hour. You yeah. though. <laughs> yeah, Back to you that. and clowns. No, no. We're well, done. Mark is asking about Fallout seventy six. All right. With no single player go. story mode. Yeah. I'm happy with that. I love online gaming. That's why though. Yeah. I'm in the minority. So, also met Todd Howard. He was amazing. I told him I can't wait to play Skyrim on my fridge. Oh, that's so sweet. Like Skyrim did you on give your him a hug? fridge? They did a he's bit. Re -re he's re-released Skyrim. They get criticized because they make so many versions of Skyrim. So <laughs> To be fair, they've released it, what, nine times total? So they did a bit where they were like, hey, now it's on your smart fridge. And it's oh, on your yeah. smart fridge. On Alexa. Gotcha. Alexa. So, someone, um, so after the conference, I met him, and I was like, hey, I'm really excited to play Skyrim on my fridge. Jeez. That would be That would be funny. I think that they actually are coming out with a sequel to Skyrim. Or Elder the Scrolls. Elder Scrolls 6. 6 right? yeah. They showed a by title the, card that they spent five minutes in. I would say, by the game. way, yeah. I'm like, you guys, you could, that was just a shot, that could have been a shot from Tamriel. That could have just been Skyrim again. You just took a picture, and just, you know, a, you know, a five second recording, and went, loop it. 
ask enough. Okay, so we're going to talk over this uh, next one because because this is he one, looks so disgruntled. This That's is one like Michael wanted us to, to look at. So I'm gonna I'm just we're just gonna you can talk over this one. So, and it's inappropriate, sir. No, may contain it. The ESRB hasn't uh, hasn't rated it yet. Which one is this? What is this? Um, Ooh. Jump force. Yeah. Oh, jump this force. is jump force. So those are those are the kages you just saw. This, now this, now one this, well, this, 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 this is one piece. This is one piece. a lot of different. Does that different look like animes or? into it. What is this? Is this so basically, they put a bunch of different seen, anime seen God of War. franchises together in a fighting game. Everyone who's owned by Bandai Namco and Shonen Jump, specifically. Bandai. So it's like a. Um, so it's like every Tales game. Combat type thing? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. It'll, this it'll, is a 3D. It's what's known as a arena fighter. So you really have full realm to be able to run around. Cyberpunk. Space. Looks very, very similar to Tekken. Um, oh, Soul Calibur. Oh, nice. Yeah. Same, same fighting style as that, except for the fact it's. A little different because if you've ever like I, I hate to use this, but the Naruto fighting games are all that. Yeah. Or J Stars, which is also Bandai Namco. That was yeah. Like predecessor. That, to see, this. That's you mean you mean uh you know you know Shonen Jump One. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. Ah. I like that, and they show that you can have both the Japanese voice actor and the. This uh, was actually English. IGN put out a thing. It was simply based on the traffic to their website, the top ten games. This is Jump really Force was cool like looking. number three or four. Mm-hmm. People were really people were really really hyped. I, I played this it. Game. I played it at E3. Did you? Okay. I don't. How I was don't, it? It was good. I, I'm excited uh, for it. So it's worth buying. Is that gameplay right there? Or is that no, 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 no. This is a cutscene that I made. They, the they, the they, gameplay. I mean, that's in engine just about. I mean, the they, they showed the gameplay. Like it's that. very. It looks really really good. My only thing with it is. Um, from a competitive standpoint, I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll be. See, a people are like, oh, he's like, yeah. like, I'm like, he's gonna be. He's gonna, gonna say he may not be in the game, but he'll be a call or something in the game. They already said not every character you see is in the game. Yeah, he, he was like, like, oh, just, Ryuk's too powerful. He yeah, said that. I'm like, he's I'm like, like they'll the bring game. him in as something silly, like background in the game, character. They just like, use him in cutscenes. Yeah, they'll put him in the world or in the game to some capacity. In the commercial, put him in, the in the announcers. Gotcha. Yeah, but they won't be playable characters. So can you imagine the game hunter since he played it? Yeah, no, it's really exciting. I'm, I'm really fun. I would like. I would like. It's really I was fun. Excited. I'm excited for it. I had a stroke right Back down. Uh, Did you really, say you were really fun? It's really exciting. Really fun. He yeah, is yeah. really fun. Yeah, it's really exciting. It's really, 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 really fun. I said it's really exciting. I'm fun for it. Uh, no, fun, I'm fun now, for it. Who now? Who is this one? I don't know. I'm waiting to see. Oh, it. this is the Gundam one Gundam. that Hunter. Gundam. Right. Yeah. New one that just came out today. Please tell me it's not gameplay. Oh, is it Breaker Three? Yeah. Is that gameplay? Is this playing? Yeah. What are they doing? Why does this look like a I don't know. What's it on? Is it on the 64? Is this an indie developer? He has four PC. It's an indie developer. I'll put money on it. There's no way. The 360 games look better. Than, like, Dynasty Warriors Gundam looks better than this. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. This, this has to be an indie developer. Or this is pre alpha. It looks like that's like a claymation of the actual toy. It is, it's like running around quick. It's like that's like where you build your Gundams and everything. And it's pretty cool. Alright, they're using the After Effects explosion. That's good, that's good. The Spark, too. This is be. There's no way you should use this triple A title. Not Gundam, which is in Bandai. Oh no, it's not Tom, it's a new company doing it. That's why people on the Gundam come out. You're a high school company? <laughs> yeah, probably. But <laughs> they're full sale university. Made in Unity. <laughs> yeah, made in <laughs> Unity. <laughs> oh my god. It kind of looked worse hey, than the Transformers God Devastation that, game. That's all that matters. The problem is, is Gundam fighting games always have the potential to be really, really good, but they never really are. Don't loan is in it. That's all that matters. Because at this point, like you know, I'd rather I'd rather go play. Uh, God, what was that small indie game that never got that, that, that never got big enough? It was uh, Kai, Colossal Kaiju Combat. Oh yeah. Everyone, everyone wanted that to have just, that to work and just didn't. I feel like God, that looks like it's gonna play the same way. So oh, the, I'm not gonna lie, the combat already looks clunky. Well, you can like see the slowdown when you hit somebody. Yeah. Like it doesn't. Well, even just looking at the movement, the movement looks like you're, you know, you have to work the circle stick a lot more than you would normally would. Or in, on PC, it's it's omnidirectional, so you'll be using your control. So you're just using forward, back, and strafe, which will be something that console players won't have. And I'm sure people are gonna bitch about. To show you how Resident Evil, how popular Resident Evil 2 was at E3, the remake. How low was that queue? Uh, my friend got there. He went there first thing, 9 a.m. on the final day. He played it around 1 p.m. 
But the thing is, people love Resident Evil. They'll, they'll go back and sit through a Resident Evil a queue twice as long if they had he to. He says they literally, like, because you had to go through, like, this little haunted house first. Like, the, the guy literally hands you a flashlight and says, good luck. And <laughs> That's it, awesome. You have to get I through it to that. get to the demo. But yeah, I really like cool. last year. Resident Evil 7 was probably one of my favorite games of the year. That was a really, really fun experience. And I, I could not play that in out. VR. I started in VR. I'm like, nope. <laughs> I, heard, I heard it's getting released for... Uh, the Oculus and the Vive later this year, and I'm thinking just like, I'm brave and all. I don't know if I'm that brave. The Switch version is really weird because it's kind of pointless. I, did they edit it? Did they I edit it for children? Well, so it's only in Japan, and it's a cloud version. So you have, so you have to have internet to play it. But the whole point of the Switch is it's an on-the-go portable system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not always going to have internet. Everywhere. So you're not always going to have internet. So it kind basically means you can probably only play it you gotta buy an air card. at home. you got to buy an air card now. Or you have, Yeah, you have some sort of you know portable Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you, you couldn't play it on Switch. Hmm. So, to, be com yeah. to be completely fair, I've absolutely seen kids at SPC with their air cards smashing people in um, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters mm. on their laptop. And I think That's coming to Switch now, too. I heard, yeah. yeah. Um, the Switch has actually got a lot of really good releases. I'm really excited for Star Fox, believe it or not. I didn't think I'd be at all excited well, for Star not, Fox. That's the Switch? No, Come that's a Switch different first. game. It's not a... It's Star Fox... Fox McCloud is in a different game. It's yeah. not it's a Star Fox still, game. It's still going to play the same way, though. It's ship style. Yeah, Star, it's still... It, Starlink? That yeah, Starlink. It's still like, you know, you build your ship, you fly your yeah. ship around like you would. Of course, they're not... Uh, of course, they're not going to get the same thing. It's going to be a, you know, it's a you pick your, your style of play thing. So, Hunter, um, I know you were at E3. What was yeah. your favorite game you saw there? It was either Smash or Kingdom Hearts. Easy. Uh, and both of which, I don't know about Smash. Lucky with Smash, I had an appointment. So I, play, I waited all 15 minutes to play it on the first day. Uh, Kingdom Hearts, on the other side. Now, what was interesting about this year, Xbox said screw the ESA. Um, because they own the building right next door to the Los Angeles Convention Center. So rather than rent a booth and spend all that money to do their own promotion, they just went into their own building and basically hosted their own three-day event. Nice. What was interesting about that was not everyone knew about it. They had a Kingdom Hearts 3 demo downstairs. Oh. So I went down there to play it and I waited 30 minutes. Had you gone upstairs to the Square Enix booth, to the main building, it was another four hour wait and they had to cap the line. And they so when you play these games, how long do you get to play them? 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the so demo. You, so you're just basically going You're, playing the you're getting just enough to get a feel for it and go, yes, I like it, no, I don't. And it, E3's an industry. It's not like MegaCon or it's not yeah. a convention. It's an expo for the industry is what it's, it's it marketing. It's a lot of waiting in lines. Right. It's, it's, it's meant for you to go and report on, you know, here are the games we played, here's what we're looking forward to, that sort of deal. So it's sort of had a controversy around the past two years because now the public is getting in. Mm -hmm. People like me who... You know, we don't have a million people following us, so we're, you know we're not big enough mm -hmm. to be media in, in their eyes. But the actual people who are media are now mad at the gamers because they're like, "This is a trade event. You shouldn't be here." It's, so it's it's turned into this little mess. But the ESA is making so much money off of the gamer passes; they don't care because it's two hundred fifty bucks for the three day pass. Um, money, so money, so money, do they? Money, so do like, does each booth give you? Do they have like? Oh, there's free like swag. Out, oh, yeah, you get crap. big bags and pins and shirts. And, oh, yeah. All right, boys, guess what? We're out of time. It's time to go. Is it actually? Yeah. Yep. It's is it time really? time to is go. It? Man, this show is Tomorrow, so we're going to be at Adventure Coast Whoa. in Spring Hill. All right, so everybody say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Everybody, everybody later. Bye.